David here with Fig Boot on pens. Today I'm going to talk about a pen that is very different than anything else in my collection, and that pen is the Keras Customs Ink. Uh, we're going to go over the parts of the pen, some of the things I care for and don't care for, provide some measurements, some size and weight comparisons, and then I'll do a writing sample. Keras Customs was started in 2008 by Bill Keras, who owns a machine shop in Mesa, Arizona, which is right outside of Phoenix. His shop manufactured cell phone cases and had a few Kickstarter projects before they began manufacturing a fountain pen line that turned into the Keras Customs ink. Uh, the ink actually comes in, in three different finishes. There is an aluminum version, which uh, here's a picture from their website. You can kind of see the rainbow of colors that the aluminum version comes in. And they also offer a, uh, a brass version and a copper version. Uh, there are five different section options as well. Uh, from another picture from their website, here is three of them, the aluminum and the copper and the brass. Uh, and the section also comes in uh, black as well as a raw tumbled aluminum version. And the thing is you can actually interchange them. So you, if you wanted a, a black section on a copper pen, you could do that. Or if you wanted a, a brass section on an aluminum pen, you could do that as well. Uh, the aluminum version actually has an anodized finish, which is an oxide layer formed on the surface of the aluminum using an electrochemical process. Um, the copper and brass versions are polished to a high shine, and these versions don't have a protective finish, so they will age and patina over time. Uh, you can leave the surface natural, or you can maintain the polish with a chemically treated cloth, which is provided. And I picked up the copper version. Uh, so let's take a look at this box. It's actually a very cool box. A nice retro box here with uh, some cool designs on it. And there's a lot going on here in this box. When you open it up, you see the pen. So inside, besides the pen, we have some filling instructions. Uh, they have some instructions on how to keep a nice shine on your pen. And then we have a bunch of things here. We have the cloth that I described earlier. Uh, here's a Keras Customs sticker. Uh, it came, this is a cartridge converter pen. It does come with the standard international uh, converter, uh, but it came with five cartridges. I'm not sure if I've uh, uh, had a pen that came with so many cartridges that I won't use. And then uh, it's actually interesting because when you get the pen, the pen actually comes in this uh, bag, but then the, the section comes in another bag and the nib and feed come in another bag and that you just assemble everything together and it ta just takes two seconds. But here is the Keras Custom Ink in the copper version. Um, it is bright and shiny right now, but it will change over time and patina. Um, just as an example, you know, we're used to seeing the, the Statue of Liberty in its, her current like blue-green state, um, but originally she was this color. I think that would have been kind of cool to see the Statue of Liberty uh, before it patinaed in the, its copper state like that. And so she used to be the color of this pen. So let's start with the cap. Um, Here's a picture of the cap. Uh, you can see that it has a, a very chunky clip that kind of bisects the, the finial. And then there are two screws that um, ha have a purpose of, of actually holding in the uh, clip, but I think that it adds a, ni a nice design element to it as well. Then right next to there, you can see that there is a, a slight groove and then the, uh, the cap is, is straight. Um, the clip is very stiff. Um, it is very difficult to move that clip and it is so thick that it would take a tremendous amount of, uh, of pressure to, uh, uh, to hurt this thing. But it, it isn't so stiff that you can't put it in a pocket. But um, you really don't want to put this in your shirt pocket. It's almost meant for a, a, sh uh, a jeans or a, a pants pocket because um, this pen is incredibly heavy. And if you put it in a shirt pocket, then it's just going to kind of weigh down the shirt and doesn't really uh, look good. So yes, this is not a, uh, a shirt pocket pen. It's more of a pants pocket pen or one that you would hold around. Uh, the, the, pen, the, the barrel gently tapers down. And then here at the end, we'll see if you can see that, there's just a tiny little nib at the end that adds, so it's not completely fat, flat, but adds a, a nice kind of swirled design element to the back of this pen. 
the cap twists off to reveal this semi hooded nib. Here's a close up picture of it. You know, at first I wondered why it was kind of semi hooded like this. This is a, an aluminum, or I'm sorry, a steel uh, Bach nib. Uh, but as I mentioned, it also comes in a uh, titanium nib that you can order directly from Keras Customs website. I'm not sure if they offer the titanium nib um, through other retailers, but I, I've only seen it available directly through their website. Uh, and like I said, I was wondering why it was semi hooded. And I, I think maybe I figured it out, or at least I understand why. Um, it's basically so that it will fit into the cap. Um, in the cap, the, the cap is solid copper, and it's solid going up to right around that groove there. And if the nib wasn't hooded, it wouldn't actually fit in here. So they would have had to bore out more. So I'm not quite sure if it was a design choice of saying, hey, we want a hooded nib, and this is the cap that will go on it, or if they designed the cap and said, hey, in order to get this nib to fit, we have to make it semi-hooded. Um, either way, um, uh, it's a little bit different and I kind of like it. And, it, and the, uh, the nib performs very well. Um, it's decently smooth and, and has a little bit of feedback to it so that um, uh, it, it's very pleasant. The section you can see here already has some patina to it. Um, it kind of looks like old penny and uh, or new penny and new penny here and old penny here. Uh, the oils from your hand will actually speed up the patina process, which is why it's happening a little bit sooner on the section. Uh, and also you want to be careful because if you always happen to hold the cap in your hand when you're writing, then that will speed up the patina process on the cap and have it be different than the barrel that is not necessarily in contact with your skin all the time. Uh, I think I've made the decision, at least for right now, that I'm gonna leave the, the section go natural and that for now I'll use the polishing cloth that they provide on the, uh, on the body of the pen. This is the, the cloth they provide and uh, it's chemically treated and you can see I've done a little bit of polishing on that. They say don't wash this uh, and that it's good until this is like 100% black and so it'll be good for quite some time. So we'll see how much I want to keep up with the maintenance of this pen and how quickly it patinas. But who knows, over time I might let the whole thing go just so you're not polishing it on a regular basis. Uh, but it does look nice and it just kind of has a, an aged look to it. So I think it will add a lot of character to the pen. Uh, the section gently tapers down and then tapers back up again and these um, threads are a little bit on the sharp side, but I don't find them uncomfortable when your, your grip is on them. Uh, that This pen will not post, but that's really not a big deal. I mean, if you really shove it on there, it can kind of stay, but you don't want to post this thing. Uh, and the reason is, is because this pen is incredibly heavy. Uh, and, but I don't find it uncomfortable to use for long writing sessions. The, the, the weight is rather evenly distributed, so it's not like it's top heavy or, or bottom heavy. Uh, but it does give you a bit of a workout, and it can leave your hands smelling of copper as well. I don't know if that's something that's going to go away with time, but that's something I did notice is that it has a bit of a copper smell to it. In this pen, I've had it for a couple of weeks, and so that might go away over time. Uh, that, uh, and I assume that the aluminum models don't have that, and I'm not sure about the, the brass one as well. Um, the price can vary on the uh, ink from $95 from an aluminum version with a steel nib all the way up to $240 for one of the copper or brass versions with a titanium nib. So it really varies depending on the materials and the nib that you choose. Um, you know, I did notice that Goulet Pens offers the high-end models like the copper and brass for $20 cheaper than Keras Custom Site, but from what I saw, you could only get the titanium nib directly through Keras Customs site. You know, I, I really enjoyed this pen, uh, mainly because it is so different than anything else in my collection. Uh, you know, I also like it because it's incredibly solid and, and very, very well made. Uh, you, you feel like you literally could drop this thing and it's not going to hurt it as long as you don't drop it on the end of the nib. I have a feeling that if you drop this thing nib down, it would just destroy this nib. The weight of it coming down would not be a pretty sight. Uh, it's also fun to see, pe see people's reaction when you hand them this pen. Uh, they can't believe how heavy it is as soon as they, uh, they pick it up. So now I'll go ahead and we'll show some measurements. Uh, I'll show some size and weight comparisons and then we'll provide a writing sample.
Before we get started with the size comparisons and the writing sample, I know I mentioned several times that this is a heavy pen, but I just wanted to show you exactly how heavy it is. You notice that within the measurements, I showed you that this pen is 122 grams. Now, what does that exactly mean? How, what is, how heavy is 122 grams? Uh, just for example, this Mont Blanc 149 is 34 grams or this Pelican M805 is 31 grams. Uh, just so you understand, uh, here is a um, Lamy Safari, and that comes in at 17. Then we could add a Quebeco Skyline Sport. Then we could add a Pilot Metropolitan. Then we could add a Pilot Varsity. Then we have a Parallel and a Plumix. Then we have a Pereira. And finally, a Platinum Cool. And lo and behold, all of those equal the same amount as the Keras Customs ink. So just to show you exactly how heavy this thing is. So. Now, my paper is upside down, but let's fix this in just one snap. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Keras Customs ink. Uh, here it is compared to the Mont Blanc 149. Uh, the, here it is to the uh, Lamy 2000, the stainless steel version. Then we have the uh, Pelican M805. So it's almost very most comparable to the, the M805. Then here it is compared to a, a Diamond 580 AL, a Pilot Vanishing Point, and then a Lamy Studio. So we have here is the Keras Customs ink. And this is a medium nib. Like I said before, it also comes uh, in a titanium nib. This is the steel nib. Uh, and the ink I'm using is Caveco Caramel Brown. This is the bottle that it comes in. I kind of like these little bottles. Uh, I think the logo looks nice. And then I kind of like also the bottles that you can tip on their side. Well, that would turn it over, but tip on their side when there's, uh, when there's not as much ink left in there and you can get that ink out. This is what the, the Caramel Brown looks like. Uh, it's very similar to the Faber-Castell Hazelnut Brown. Uh, and here it is in comparison to uh, one of my favorite browns right now, the SBRE Brown. Um, this is, a much more solid brown. The SBRE has a, a lot more shading to it that you really don't get out of the, the caramel brown. Uh, but so far the ink is very well behaved and I like it. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Lazy dog. Uh, this, this nib is a steel nib and it is a bit on the firm side. You can get a little bit of line variation out of there, not a ton. I really wouldn't want to push this thing that much. Um, you can get a little bit out of here, but I don't think that that's really what this nib is specifically meant for. In regard to wetness, I don't find it to be extraordinarily wet. The flow is fine, uh, but then again, that could be some properties of the ink. And in regard to reverse writing, it is very scratchy, but it does write. So, and then in regard to fast writing, some initials here to check the ink flow. There's been no issues with this whatsoever, and it keeps up just fine. So there you have the Keras Customs ink. 
Uh, it's a pen that is incredibly sturdy and very well machined. And on top of that, it writes very, very well. And I think this brass finish, finish is uh, extremely cool. So if you like these reviews, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below or I can be reached at figbootonpens at gmail.com. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.